You know all those songs about having one more day or your last day on earth or just an hour with you? Yeah, they're everywhere and in every popular genre. And they are usually big stinkers, like Nickelback's If Today Was Your Last Day. If today was your last day, and tomorrow's too blow. Yeah, sorry for reminding you of that. And the sad movies that remind you to hold on to what you've got because it could be all gone tomorrow. That Nicholas Sparks stuff. Dear John, The Notebook. Very melodramatic. Douglas Sirk did it better in the 50s. But when you take out all the sappy stuff and put in the cool, the dark, the foreboding, you'll get Rudolph Matei's Dead on Arrival. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world. All you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Cine Shadow Moonlights, Noir Vimbo. This film opens with a man outside of police station headquarters. There's a great tracking shot of him from behind as he walks down the hallway to the Homicide Division office. He wants to report a murder. Where was this murder taking place? San Francisco, last night. Who's been murdered? We get our first look at Frank Bigelow. I was. You were? What, are you like a Romero zombie? A Dracula? We got like a whole family of Draculas back home? (laughs) Flashback. Eddie O'Brien plays Frank, an accountant and public notary. He's taking a one-week vacation to San Fran. His secretary slash lady friend, Paula, doesn't like that he's not taking her. He's not committed to her and has been just going through the paces. There will be little time for regret later. Eventually, he gets a hall pass of sorts to let loose while he's there. It's the last day of market week and everyone is letting loose, especially the women. There is a comedic whistle whenever Frank sees a pretty lady. (whistles) Frank finds a party and they end up at the Fisherman. The band is wild. A couple is crazy about them. Come on, fishermen! Ow! Do it, baby! Jive-ass turkey talk ensues. This lets us know we are in the 50s. The music gets more hectic, fast, and bold. The jazz nightclub age of noir. The laid-back, cool, but frenetic decade. Now remember, people, especially the ladies, never And I mean never leave your drink unattended. A cloaked noir man slips something into Frank's drink. He kind of reminds me of the neighborhood watch sign mascot. He takes a sip and notices it's off. He leaves with the hopes of meeting up with a dame later that night, but lays down for bed instead. In the morning, he's out of it, and he goes and visits a doctor. It's found that he's been given a luminous toxin and that his body has absorbed it. There's not much time to live. Frank, he's in denial. A second opinion proves the same. I don't think you fully understand, Bigelow. You've been poisoned. He runs and runs and runs. Apparently the scene was shot without permits, and the pedestrians are clearly confused when Eddie O'Brien runs into them. Guerrilla filmmaking on the cheap. I love it. Frank decides to find the agents of his own death, and why. The last and greatest thing he'll ever do. I'll leave the plot contrivances, the iridium sale, and notary stuff to you viewers, but... 
There are some awesome shootouts and photography coming up. Although Rudolph Matei was a photographer himself, he decided to give the job to Ernest Laszlo, who had worked with Robert Aldrich on Kiss Me Deadly and Stanley Kramer on It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. They did well in deciding to shoot at the Bradbury Building for the site of Mr. Phillips' office. This building is amazing looking and it works really well for noirs since shadows can be cast using the railing and it's a very wide open stairwell area. This building has been used in many a film. In the previously talked about double indemnity and probably the most popular use in the neo-tech noir Blade Runner. There's a few shootouts in the film as I said before. In one of them after Frank has gotten some info, he's shot at. That starts a great tracking shot of him going through ditches and around big oil drums and through abandoned cars, all while being shot at. This leads him into a big abandoned building, and there's high angles, low angles, shots of stairs, everything. There's also a great chase scene when Frank is running from a thug. He finds a pharmacy to hide out in, and the thug follows. The thug runs in there, and he just starts shooting up everything. And there's a great part when the pharmacist takes a full champagne bottle and just throws it right at his face, breaking everywhere. The cop comes in, and boom, takes him out. It's great. In conclusion, I love this movie. It's fast-paced, the concept is eerie, and above all else, I connect with it because of the fact that it puts a normal everyday man in a badass situation. He procrastinated throughout his life until the end. There, he finished in style. Kind of like this marathon. And if you like Eddie O'Brien like I do, check him out in White Heat, Julius Caesar, and The Wild Bunch. Also, this movie is in the public domain, so it can easily be viewed on YouTube. So if you got the time, check it out.